Hello YouTube, today I'd like to make a quick little video tutorial showing you how to turn your old Android smartphones into IP based uh, security cameras for your house. Now in order to do this we're going to need two apps. One of them is called TinyCam. There's a pro version and a standard version. Unless you want to get right into coding, uh, I don't think you need to get the pro version. And the other program that we're going to need is simply called IP webcam. With these two simple straightforward programs we can turn any Android into either an IP cam or a uh, security system uh, hub. Right now I am running Tiny Cam uh, to show you all four of the cameras that I have placed around my house. And in fact one of the cameras is this very camera running both programs at the same time. Alright, so with TinyCam, you can save everything that you see. With IP Webcam itself, you can set it up to save in about two hour loops, which isn't great for all purposes. It's not great for anything professional, but it's just fine for, for standard consumer electronics stuff. This is great if you just want to watch your house, you just want to be able to pick up your your uh, your phone and see what's going on but if you use tiny cam it's also great for saving exactly what you see for future future reference so these are the two apps that you'll be wanting tiny cam monitor and IP webcam now you've already seen tiny cam monitor tiny cam monitor is also a great way to view webcams from all around the world from famous locations and the next thing we'll do is we will jump right into IP webcam. Now I already have this thing set up. So you see the web, uh, the web address. You're going to need that address. That's going to be very important. There are multiple ways that you can connect to this. But in this documentary, I am going to be using TinyCam. But I'll also show you how to use Internet Explorer to view this output. So as soon as we open IP webcam, we'll be faced with multiple settings. And there's not really a whole lot that we need to know about this stuff. You can go through it and learn little bits and pieces. You can set up uh, streaming and whatnot. But basically, you just go right down and go start server. Right at the bottom, we'll have an IP web address that we can use to see it elsewhere. Let me fire up my computer and I will just throw those numbers in the bottom into my browser and that's exactly what's going to come up. One second. So just like I said, go to your web browser and just type in the info 192.168.0. whatever that uh, system is. And uh, yeah, just go up to Flash if you have Flash installed. It's all different kinds of ways you could view browser Java. Some takes uh, some takes more time than others, and again, this will record video and audio. So you can check it out from your browser, from your web browser. There's multiple, multiple ways you can do this, but in this one occasion, we're going to use TinyCam because I find it to be the best. Now, in order to add another camera to this system, we will have to do the following. Go to dot dot. Oh, wait, wrong setting. Come over here to the left, manage cameras. And then we would come down, hit add a camera. I don't have any extra cameras right now, so I'm just going to try what I already have. Now, you can name the cameras right here. You can say it's outside, kitchen, etc, etc. This is going to be real, real important. Go to camera vendor and then go to IT webcam for Android, just like that. You're going to want the camera model to be generic. And we'll just put in the IP host on that. Remember, that was the numbers that was at the bottom of the picture when we were in IP webcam. 192.168.0.20 Okay, and we come up to the top and we check, uh, check the ping, see if it's communicating in, and it is. 
Awesome. So back, back, and there we go. I have to set this thing up for more camera for page. Oh, my oldest Android's knocking out there. There we go. That's a, a bad room for a Wi-Fi connection. Let's see if we can change how everything looks. Cameras per page. Let's go for the five. There we go. You can see, since I plugged it in twice, I have two pictures coming off this one phone. So this is an excellent thing to do if you have plenty of old Android phones. Uh, some Android phones are a dime a dozen. Now the reason that I prefer TinyCam is because from within the app itself you can save all the data right on your memory card. Record settings. You can put everything yeah, wherever you want. You can tell her how much space to use, or even just to turn on if there's any motion detected. Now one thing I should warn you about in this is uh, don't get frustrated, too frustrated with the cameras. The video on this is only going to be as good as the camera that you're using. Remember that the front facing camera is about 5 megapixels, is great. This one is 8 megapixels. I believe if we double tap it, you can see it. That's that's eight megapixels. Let's go on to the next. This is three megapixels. Oh, sorry, this one is also eight megapixels. And that's three megapixels. This is an old Optimus one. Not bad. But some of this stuff isn't gonna work as nicely as you want. Oh, and with this big 8 megapixel, you can see all the dust on my desk that I haven't uh, cleaned up just yet. Very nice. Very nice. And, yeah, so ultimately, that is how... That is how you set up a security system with nothing but Android products. I hope you enjoyed this, YouTube. I'll uh, hopefully put more videos up of other ways that you can use your old Androids as security cameras. If you like the video, YouTube, have a good one.